Hey everyone, my name is Brian Lovelace. I'm the founder of NaviUpgrade.com. Today, I'm going to be upgrading this 2014 Ford Escape from Sync 2 to Sync 3. So that means that this owner is now going to have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a much better touch interface for their car. Let's get right on into it. All right, so this is what you need for any successful Sync 2 to Sync 3 conversion. First, you'll need a screen and an APIM. This is a combo right here. So this has your screen, your APIM module, your LVDS cable, low voltage display, signal cable, a USB hub, a hub size adapter, you need a wiring adapter to power this hub. In terms of tools, we'll need an eight millimeter socket and a T8 Torx bit, along with some trim tools. We'll also need a GPS module, a sticky pad, a Windows laptop, and a OBD2 cable. All right, now we're going to begin to remove the Sync 2 system from this car to replace this screen with Sync 3. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to lift up right here until you hear the pops. And on this side, we're gonna hear a pop. It might feel like you're gonna break it, but you're not going to. So we lift up here and there's a little clip right here that has a connector on it. We're just gonna feel around for where the clip is. The clip is on my thumb side like that. We're gonna pull on it just like that, release the clip and then do a couple wiggles just like that to get the back part out. And we're gonna set this aside. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to bring out our eight millimeter socket here. And there are two eight millimeter bolts right here. One, and then on the other side, two. Set these in a cup holder for safekeeping. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna pull up on this just like this. Might make a couple unpleasant noises. But it should come out just fine. You can use your pry tools to help with this. And there's going to be two connections on the back here. Actually one connection, but it's got a little uh, tab to hold it in place. So we're just going to pop that tab out, just wiggle it out. It's kind of like one of those Christmas tree connectors. And uh, sometimes your vents might fall out like that. We're gonna take off this side too. Now we're left with four eight millimeter bolts, which we're going to remove with our eight millimeter socket again. Whoever uh, Installed these on Ford, did a really good job. <laughs> and again, we're gonna drop them in our tray down below for safekeeping. All right, so now this entire display will pop out just like that. And if you can see right here, there's a swing latch connector. We're going to push in on the tab right here and then swing this latch back just like that. And then there's a tab for the USB right here. We're gonna unclick it just like that. We'll just make a pinching motion. And then your screen, your display is out. Let's show you how to remove these brackets and put them onto your Sync 3 display. All right, for this part of the process, we're going to be taking the brackets off of our Sync 2 display and putting them onto our Sync 3 display. So we're going to grab our T8 screwdriver and there are T8 screws right here on the side. We're just gonna break them free. And then after that, we can really do this by hand. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our Sync 3 a pim and screen combo and we're going to put the brackets on this display. So this bracket goes on like this and it should click right into place. Just like that. The screws line up right there. And then we can start threading these in. Take our second screw and get this one threaded in. Always make sure you note the orientation of your display. These little marks right here, this little groove, 
signifies that this point's down. So the top of your display is here, the bottom of your display is here, left side, right side, okay? Set this aside, we're gonna go back to our Sync 2 display. Gonna break these screws free again. You can set this aside. Bring our Sync 3 display back, line it up. Gonna get these screws into place. And now we can screw everything in. And there we have it. It's the bottom of our display. It's ready to go back into the car. All right, so now that we're back in the car, we're going to reconnect our Sync 3 APIM, which means that we're going to go from the back here. And the swing latch harness connects in just like this. You push just like that. And as you push, you'll see the swing latch swing back and then you just lock it into place like that. Take your uh, USB port, connect the black one, connect it to the black port right here. Should connect in just like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to install a GPS antenna. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple lengths of our GPS antenna and lengthen it out just a little bit there. And then we're going to uh, twist tie this all back off so we have enough room to run this cable uh, to where we need it to go. So I'm going to take this side, the side from the uh, GPS itself, just get a couple uh, rounds of that right there, just enough so we can fit it back here, just like this. And we're gonna put it right into place back here, right next to the left side, uh, the driver's side of the sweet speaker right here, the center speaker. And then we're gonna route the cable back up this way. All right, now we're just gonna take the excess and zip tie it all off. Perfect, just like that. Then we're going to tuck all of the excess back behind here and plug in to the APIM right here. And now we can start reassembling everything. Tuck all of the wires back behind there. And now we're gonna put the four screws in for the screen assembly. Now we're going to put our uh, vents back in. So we're just gonna line it back up in here till we hear them snap into place, just like that. And now we're gonna take the uh, driver's side vent and do the exact same thing. All right, snaps into place. Oopsies. There we go. Now it's in place. And now we can take our fascia with our controls on it. We're going to re-plug in this uh, eight pin connector and then make sure that the holding tab is plugged is uh, back on the trim. We're gonna give some firm pressure evenly around it to make sure that it's all clicked back into place. And don't forget, there's two more screws that uh, go up top here. All right, now all we need to do is we need to take our top piece again, our cover, and we are going to, don't forget about this plug right here, plug back in right here. All right, we got it in there. And then uh, we're gonna keep an eye on our GPS module to make sure that it's not in the way of anything. All right, very nice. Give some nice even pressure all around to make sure that it's secured and tightened on there. Make sure there's nothing lifting on this, uh, this mesh panel right here. We were having that issue before with, with our previous GPS placement. So uh, we got it all put back in the right spot, which is right back here, right next to that speaker. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, turn the car onto accessory mode just to make sure that it works. And now we're saying, now we're saying USB hubs are not supported. All right, so now we're moving on to the last stage of upgrading to Sync 3. And that's gonna be replacing this hub right back in here. So what I recommend is getting one of these 45 degree angle uh, pry tools and that will come right back right off just like that and uh, What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get our fingers in here and uh, Try and get our pry tool in here, too, and we lift up right under that and it should just lift out Oops get the SD card out of there See that it just lifts right out and as you can see we've got two connections on the back here and we're gonna pop that one out and then we're gonna pop the USB out. Sorry, I don't have any light, so uh, I'm gonna be holding my phone here a little bit. All right, that's popped out just like that. And there's the old hub. Let me get the adapter plate out of there. Get that put back on there. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to take our uh, plate, our adapter plate, just like this. And we're going to feed these up through here, just like this. And this will all lock into place just like that. You can get this plate on NaviUpgrade.com. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the hub power adapter you can also get this little power adapter on aviupgrade.com as well. And we're going to plug this in just like this. If I can do this one-handed, you can definitely do this uh, two-handed. It's very easy. And then uh, this is our new hub. It's a two-port hub. And I'm going to plug this in right here. And then finally, I'm going to take the USB. And as you can see, there's a USB port down in there. So right here, we're going to take this USB port and get it plugged in right here. Just like that. And now we can see that there's a little beveled edge right there and a little beveled edge right there. So we're gonna tuck all these back in to the cubby area. And there's that 45 degree beveled edge. So we just align this back up just like this and it snaps into place. All right, nice. Now we have the right USB hub port and uh, ready for sync three. Hey there, Navi Upgrade family. I just got home, started editing the video and I realized I didn't film an outro. So Ollie and I are here to say that uh, we really appreciate you watching. If, if you found this video helpful, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it, trying to help more people out. Uh, I'm also going to have a programming tutorial for the Ford Escape coming soon. You're going to be able to find that right up here once that video is uploaded. Once again, really appreciate you guys. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.